So I'm gonna assume that you've already downloaded and installed Elementor. So you should see this edit with Elementor button now showing up here when we are on a create a new page. Um, if your page doesn't look like this, this is the Gutenberg editor. If you have classic WordPress still, it'll look a little different. But regardless, you should see up here in the menu bar somewhere a blue button that says edit with Elementor. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that and that's gonna actually take us into the actual page builder where we can use Elementor. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna make sure I'm just starting on a blank canvas page here. So page layout, we're gonna to go to Elementor Canvas. This is gonna create me a blank page from scratch. So starting off, you have this little plus icon. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna go ahead and create a column here. I'm gonna go ahead and do a, uh, a split screen so there's two columns. And the reason for that is when we look at our different elements here in our elements tab, traditionally if I'm building out a home page, I like to have like a video that somebody can land on and, and watch. And then next to it, I usually have some text that explains more about my website. So this is gonna be the top of your web page that catches someone's attention when they first come to your website. And then after that, maybe we throw like a button underneath the text. That way they can have like a call to action of some sort to do. So we can just try and drag and drop a button in here. All right, so let's go back to the text box now and try to actually show you all the different features. So the first feature you're going to notice here is that there's a little pencil icon, which is here in the right hand corner. This is the same for any element. So whether it's a text box or a button, for example, the button's got the pencil icon as well. And the video widget also has a little pencil icon here. So on the text box, when we go ahead and click that pencil icon, that's gonna open up the actual edit settings for the text box. So until you click on that pencil, you probably won't see any settings for your text box. Once you've clicked it, you should see now the left hand column over here. This is going to look pretty similar. You're gonna have three tabs across the top here, and then you're gonna have your traditional hamburger menu, which takes you out to your general settings. And then if you clicked on this one over here, the grid, it's gonna take you back to where this fills up full of different elements. So if you accidentally click this, again, just to get back into the text editing, go back here to the pencil. So here it brings it back up. All right, so starting off, you got three different tabs here. Number one, content. Content is gonna be where we can actually type in our text, and that's the text that's gonna populate over here in our paragraph. So if I wanted to explain about my video, maybe I'm a real estate agent, so I've got you know a video talking about my services, and then over here, I can start typing out some text. That's what that's gonna be for. You can go ahead and make some initial settings like bold. You can make it italic, you can underline it. I traditionally leave all of these alone. And what I'll do is I'll go into the style tab when I wanna actually change the different settings for my font. So in typography, we can actually change the size of our text. So if you watch over here on the right hand side of the screen, you're gonna notice it's currently at 22. As I start dragging it bigger and bigger and bigger, now we're up to 47 sized font. So we can take it back down to maybe like 26 for example. Weight is gonna be how we change it from bold. So that's how we can go up to five, six, 700. That's gonna make it more and more bold. So if I click 500, it gets a little darker. If we click 600, it gets even more darker. We can go all the way up to 900, which is super bold. And then we can go back to 100, which is gonna be super thin. So you can choose your text style, your preference there between different levels of thickness of text, basically using the weight feature. So I'm gonna set it back at like 400, which is pretty standard. I might even knock it down to 300 if I want it to be a little thinner uh, as my text there. All right, so again, going back to content now, that's how I avoid using the bold tab. We can actually get even more custom using the style tab rather than just one setting for bold. We have multiple options for boldness. All right, so text box, type all your text in. Once you've done typing your text in, you can go ahead and play around with some of the sizing and spacing to make your page look different. So that's where we're gonna go into the advanced tab. So in the advanced tab, you've got margin, you've got padding. So right now, everything looks pretty well tight to the top of my page, so I wanna give some spacing Visually, I want this text to look better with this video and not be so top heavy where it's up at the top of the video. So to do that, we can just create some padding by starting to adjust these arrows here. So they've got top padding, which would put space above the top of the text here. They've got right padding. This would move space over here on the right. 
They've got left, obviously, would do it to the left, and then bottom would add space down here below the text box. Now, when this is checked gray, it links the values together. So this gives you equal padding. So if I start typing the up arrow here, you're gonna see a number one come in all of these different boxes. This gives one space for the top, the bottom, the left, and the right. So as I keep holding on to this, you're gonna notice now if we go up to 40, it's added 40 pixels of space to the left, to the top, to the bottom, and to the right. All right, so if you wanna uncheck this, that will unlink those values. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the values so it gets rid of it from all four sides. We'll go ahead and uncheck this so now they are no longer linked together. Now it's gonna go ahead and give you the option to manually do each one individually. So if I only want top padding, I can come here and start pressing the arrow and that's gonna start putting in padding until it moves my text down the page enough to where it's more centered in the middle of the video. Now, if I wanna add some space between the bottom of the text and my button, which right now they look pretty well spaced, but if for some reason, for example, the button was hovering really tightly to my text, then we could go ahead and add some space there by pressing the up arrow, and that's gonna push the button further down the page. Or in the event that I thought there was too much space, well, we can actually go negative and we can start pulling some space back to make it negative, and that's gonna help decrease that, that space between those elements. But if you don't see that it's working, which in this case, we're not getting anything happening when I go negative, that's going to mean you need to go into margin. So margin has to do with the space outside of this little box. So you can see this kind of light blue lined box around the text here that's got the edit pencil. If we wanna adjust the space outside of this box, that's gonna be our margin. So now we're gonna unlink and we're gonna start subtracting here from the bottom, making it negative. And you can see that's starting to shrink that space. So the button is getting closer to our text. And you can even go all the way to where that line is now meshed inside of the text but you still have some space here so that it still looks okay. So it's not a fault if you accidentally bring that line up too far. But for me personally, that's a little too tight. So I might take it back down to like a negative 18, for example. All right, same thing if we keep giving it positive, now we're in the positive, so 10, 11, 12, 13. Now we've got positive space being created here. So that's a way to play around with spacing as you're adding in different elements, videos, text boxes, buttons, if you wanna adjust the space between different text boxes, you can come in here to advanced and play around with the margin, either subtracting space or giving it padding where you're adding space. Next, we wanna talk about the width. So by width, we have default here, but if you wanna go ahead and, and do like a full width or an inline, this could change the width here of just the text box itself. All right, we're gonna just leave that on default. Then we've got position, so you can leave it absolute or fixed. I usually don't mess with these, we just leave them as default. Next, we wanna talk about motion effects. If I wanted my page to load and to have some sort of entrance animation, so my text box comes flying in the page, maybe from the top and it slides down, or maybe it slides in from the right to the left, so it's got a cool little motion effect. You can change different motion effects here by doing the fade, the zoom, you can do bouncing, you can do sliding, rotating. So you would just click on one of these, like slide in from the right, for example, and you can see how that causes an effect now. So that text comes sliding in from the right. Next, let's talk about the transform box. So these settings, this would be how you could do different things like flip your text box horizontally, you could flip it vertically, you could scale it differently, you can offset your text box, you can rotate it. So again, you can play around with these settings to do different layout sizing, you know, kind of effects here to make it different than just standard where it's you know, tightly up against the video and tightly up against your button here. Now, if you wanna change the background, you go to background right now, it's by default gonna just have a white background. We can just click on this little kind of paintbrush that says classic here, and then we can choose either a default color from our pre-designed global colors, which you can set up here in the settings if you wanna manage your global colors, or you can click on this little image with the red line going through it. This shows that it's currently set to clear. That means that you're clear, you have no background. As you add color, that will change. So we're gonna go ahead and move it around. So we've got a black, we've got pink, we've got red, and that'll change the color of this little box showing you what color your background is currently. You can also type in color codes down here as well. If you wanna use different custom codes you find on the internet, maybe you like certain colors you see on other websites. 
So you can find those color codes, figure out what they are, and you can paste them in here, and that's gonna change that colored background. So I typically leave it white, or I might play around with some grays, typically going like with a light gray. Or if you wanted to go black, and then you could change the font color back to white so that it contrasts and we can actually see the font again. But for now, we might just stick with more of like a gray color just to give it some color there. Now, once you've adjusted color, you can see how the spacing is. So you can see that we're hugging the left side here pretty tightly. And what we need to do now is go back obviously into layout and give some padding there from the left. So we just start increasing our padding, holding on to those arrows until it gets enough spacing that it looks good. And then I wanna add a little bit of padding down here at the bottom until I think it looks good. All right, so again, the advanced tab is great for playing with layout mainly, and then background if you're changing the background, and then motion effects. One other thing to note, responsive here, this can hide this element on certain platforms. So if I wanted to create a custom text box only for desktop, only for tablet, or only for mobile, we can choose to hide it on the other platforms so that it will only show up on, let's say, a mobile phone, for example. So anybody visiting on a laptop or a PC desktop computer, they might not see this particular text box when we turn this on to where it says hide. All right. So you can check how it look on mobile by going down here to the little responsive mode, this little laptop icon. You can click on that. It's gonna bring a little bar up here on the top of the screen where we can rotate back and forth between a desktop computer view, a tablet view, and a mobile phone view. So we'll click on mobile phone. Now you can see how it would look. We'd have our video to start off, then we'd have our text box, and then our button all stacked on top of each other. So again, now we can come back in here and play around with some of these settings by clicking on the edit pencil icon, going into layout. And now I might take away some of the spacing here because it doesn't look right on mobile. It's got too much spacing. So what I'll do here is just click on this little to unlink it. That's gonna take it back to zero. So it got rid of all that spacing. So it by default, it kept those pre-filled in numbers from the spacing we had put when we were on desktop mode. Uh, but we just erased those, so it took it back to default. And now we can give some custom spacing specific to mobile. So if I change this and put 21 on, for example, it'll only give 21 pixels of padding on mobile. It won't do that on desktop. So if I go back to desktop, it'll still look the same with our 60 pixels of padding. So that number just went back to 60. So that's one way you can customize your page, your different elements, your text boxes, so that they look one specific way for mobile and one specific way for desktop. Because sometimes when we design a page for desktop, later on when I click into mobile view, it looks pretty jacked up where the spacing got all messed up because spacing on a mobile phone is gonna be different than it is on a desktop computer because the device isn't as wide. On a mobile phone, you're more vertical, you're more going from top top to bottom and not so much left to right like you do on a laptop where you're more about width. You don't have so much of that vertical. You're more horizontal on a desktop. All right, so going back to desktop, we've now covered the advanced tab pretty thoroughly with showing you how to adjust spacing with the margin and the padding. We also talked about motion effects, background colors, and how we can make things responsive to only show up on mobile or desktop. So that pretty much covers the advanced tab. So now let's go into style tab. This is the one you'll play around in the most. So first I'm gonna go ahead and actually take off the hide effect because I've left that on here. So we'll bring this back. All right, so now we've got a text box that is live on desktop mode. So coming back here into the text editor, you can see we've got alignment options, left, center, right, or justified. So if I wanna go to the left, that'll push text to the left, center it, it'll push it to the right, and then justified is gonna kinda of just spread it out so it spans the entire width. And if you notice the spacing of the text looks kinda of weird here, again, think back to our advanced tab earlier where we had some different padding on the left. So I can go ahead and delete out that padding and kinda of bring things back to normal there. So if I come back into style, now when I center it, it looks better centered. All right, so if you find that alignment's giving you some issues, it may be affected by your spacing. So you can always come back here and mess around. So what I like to do, I typically start off in the content tab, I type out all my text, then I might go into the style tab, play around with my text color, my text size, what font I wanna use. Once I get done adjusting all my text here, then I go into the advanced tab and I play around with spacing last. That way we don't run into these issues where we gotta go back and do things twice, so it saves a little bit of time. 
All right, so in the style tab here, again, we can play around with the alignment. Next, we can go to text color. So if I, instead of black text, maybe I want white text that shows up against that gray background, or I could go with a little darker background so that pops the white text more. So you can just play around, again, picking colors here, dra dragging it around, or you can type in custom color codes. So you're gonna start to learn some custom color codes, like white, for example, is just all zeros. And then I believe black, or sorry, black is all zeros, white is all Fs. So if we go back up here to, to white, you're gonna notice it's all Fs. And there's usually about six different letters here or a combination of letters and numbers. So if you do six Fs, that's gonna be white. And if you do six zeros, that's gonna be black. And then if you do gray, you're gonna usually have like numbers and letters that interchange. So for example, you have C5, C5, C5 for this shade of gray. As you go down, you'll have AE, A9, A9. So different color codes there based on what color you're on. But for now, we'll just leave it as black, so all zeros here. And you can also change the transparency level by scrolling back and forth here. So you can see the text comes in really strong, nice and dark. And then as we start to fade it back with the transparency tab, the text almost disappears. So that's another feature if you wanna get even more fancy. You can also use the color picker uh, where you can pick a specific color using the, the eye drop, the sampler. So if you like a certain color that's already on your page and you want a color match, then you can grab this and it'll let you come over here and grab that color. So I can grab this gray or this black, for example, using the little dropper picker upper. All right, so that's color. And then the typography is the one that you click the little pencil icon. And it's gonna have a whole bunch of settings. So we can start with font family. It's just currently Roboto. I also like Carla sometimes. This is another kind of just basic font. So we can change it and see how Carla looks. Uh, you also have Arial, I believe, which is a default one in here. So we can go to Arial. So again, you can sit and scroll through here and look at all the different fonts. They've got tons of them. If you think there's one you know, you could search it in the search bar. You can then come to size, play around with sizing by just dragging this, which that allows you to quickly see how it would look over here on the right on the page. Or you can use these little up and down arrows to get it more specific if you're trying to hit a specific number. Or you can just type it in by deleting it and typing in a specific number like 65 or or. 19 for example so three different ways to change size we talked about weight already this just you know you can go ahead and pick bold by default or you can choose specific levels of boldness by picking these different numbers transform this is going to be if you want to change it to all uppercase text which can be handy in some situations or if you want to capitalize every single letter to start every word that'll do that for you or you can go back here to just normal so I like to just leave it on default, but sometimes instead of typing out individual words where I capitalize each letter, it does save some time to use like the capitalization or the uppercase method. Style, this is gonna be if you wanna make things italic, oblique, or normal. Then we've got decoration. So you can underline things here, overline them, put a line through them. So that's another cool feature. And then line height has to do with how much space here is between the two lines of text. So this looks pretty good by default, but if I want it more spread out, we could just drag this down and you'll start to notice now we've got a lot of space in between the two lines of text. Or if we think it's too much space, maybe this is how it came by default for some reason and we wanna shrink it back down to a normal level, then we can sit there and play around with the line height. Letter spacing, we'll put space between the letters. So this is just the default where it's at, but I can go ahead and drag it out. And you can see how each of these words got a little bit more spread apart as the line, the letters now have spacing between them. Or we can tighten it up to the point that it gets really messy. That's not enough space. So we can go back here to kind of just what's considered normal. And that's a zero. So again, you can play around with the arrow keys here and that can adjust it. Or you can play with the dial going back and forth from left to right. Then lastly, we've got word spacing. So the spacing between the words. So it's pretty fancy that you can do all these individual customizations about letters, words, or line height in addition to the size and the font. So you got lots of options to make your text look good. And when you're ready, you can add a text shadow as well. If you wanna add like a little blur effect or if you wanna add a shadow to it, you can play around with transparency. You can change vertical and horizontal there. I typically leave text shadow alone, but it's a web design feature you can play with. At any time, you might have that back to default arrow that will take things back so you can reset your settings and not have to worry about figuring out where you were before if you didn't keep track. 
All right, so that's style tab. And now going back to content tab, finally, we've got columns here. So again, if you wanna add multiple columns here, you can do so where you break your text up into different columns. And then you can adjust the size of the columns gaps using the columns gap feature. Again, this is something I typically don't mess with. I just leave it by default. If I wanted to add two text boxes, however, side by side, what you can do is you can go back into elements here. There's an intersection option. So we can actually put that in our column here. And then we can drag our one text box into one of these. And then we can go ahead and see that there's a blank spot next to it now. So I can just click duplicate by right clicking on the pencil icon and I'll see the option to duplicate. So that's gonna stack them both in the same column here, but I can just go ahead and click on the pencil, hold it down and just drag it over here and let it go. And now we've got two side by side text boxes. This is known as intersection and I can keep going if I wanna create more of these. So we've got a column here, so I can just keep duplicating columns and that's gonna keep adding more text boxes side by side. So this is a way to play around too if you don't want just one text box, if you're trying to go for a certain look or certain design where you have two text boxes side by side, then you would need to use that intersection which would allow you to create two columns side by side each other and then we can put specific elements in each of those columns like two text boxes or I could put a button underneath each one. So this could have its own button and we could just duplicate it and put the other button underneath the other text box. All right, so that's pretty much the basics of the text box. Click the pencil icon, you can change your text out, you can play around with your styling of your text, and then lastly, you can play around with your spacing and motion effects. So pretty cut and dry, just going between these three tabs. And then when you're ready, you go ahead and just make sure you click update to save your changes. Uh, if you like a specific item here, we can right click on it. And I believe we can go ahead and create it or save it as like a te template. So they've got templates down here on the page where you can do save as template for the actual page itself. So you might just start off by just creating a specific text widget by itself and clicking save as template. And then you can find that text widget. So it's already got default settings. So you don't have to keep redoing it over and over each time you go to create a new web page in the future. You can just go from a template from scratch. If you've got the right font size you like, if you have the right font you like, the colors, the background, all that. So you can use templates to save some time. And then lastly, when we're right clicking on that pencil icon, this brings up the option to copy and duplicate our text boxes as well as how we can get to the text editor. If it's not opening up over here, we can right click and see it says edit text editor and that'll pop it back over here. We've also got reset style or if we like how our style is, we can copy it and we can paste it. So I could have you know, changed my text box. If these two were different, I could copy one. So I copy this one, I can come over here now, right click and I can actually click paste style and it'll change the whole style of this text box to match the one that we just copied over here. So that's kind of cool. If we want to reset, we can reset. And then lastly, you've got Navigator. So this just breaks down our whole page. So our sections, our columns, our text boxes, it lays everything out. So if I want to move stuff around, I can just quickly drag and drop. So I can put this text all the way over here. And now we just moved our text box from this column over to this column by dragging it up here in our Navigator. So sometimes it's easier to use the Navigator to drag stuff around when you've got lots of things on a page as opposed to trying to grab and hold and drag it all around your page. It might be more complicated to do it that way. So again, that's everything I think to cover in this 25 minute tutorial or so on the text box widget. We went real in depth, giving you step by step every single thing you can do in the text box widget. The last thing I'm thinking of that I haven't mentioned yet is when you have certain code you want to add into a text box, you can just do that here like normal in the text side. So you got visual where you can type your text, but if you need to add certain code in here, uh, maybe you want to add like a link that you're clicking on or uh, some sort of maybe tracking code or something else, HTML of some sort, you want to change certain font to a certain color, it's only that text. You can type in your HTML code here, but you got to make sure you're on the text tab, not the visual tab. All right. Thanks so much for watching this video on the Elementor text box widget. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.